Hi, everybody. I am Lorianne. I am that gal from Milton, Ontario, and I am with... I am that guy. I am Roy Miller from Dallas, Texas, and we're here to yeah, share with you. you how we see it. So tonight, we're really pleased to have Donna Nesbitt with us. She's going to be speaking to us about children who alienate their parents. We've heard a lot about parents who alienate their children, which is unfortunate, but there is the other side to it as well. And uh, Donna is a registered nurse. Uh, she has been married. She was married for quite a few years. Uh, I believe that was 22 with a correctional officer. And then she's been married now 10 years with uh, a new husband. And uh, through the time she's brought up uh, four children, two boys, two girls. And she's gonna be talking to us tonight again about children who alienate their parents. So Roy? Yeah, so Donna, you know, can you tell us how you got started, you know, in, do, in doing this, in this field? I have come across, like Lorianne said, I have raised four children and I am now raised, well, I have nine grandchildren mm -hmm. out of the two of us. I came across myself. I had one of my two children, my oldest two, alienate myself. And that was way back in 2012 in November the one that sticks out to me was my oldest son uh, he after his father passed away he just stopped talking to me and I knew never knew reason why so what I did as a parent to because a child alienates you you just don't give up you are there and you keep sending little messages to their phones but if you get to the point that you are feeling that you aren't getting anywhere the only thing that I could do in my time was go, I, I know this is not going to be great on your show, maybe not, maybe not taken very well, but I had, I go to the church every Sunday. And to me, I had to listen very clearly to somebody that knew something more than I did. And that was whoever was preaching the sermon. And it said, you got to give something that's hard and burning in your heart. And you got to give it up to someone higher than yourself because you can't fight it on your own. There, there's not a chance. And it was November, about the middle of November of 2012. In March, I finally understood I wasn't going to win this by myself. I, I just couldn't. My daughter, Darcy, uh, she was 16 when she alienated me. I used to throw little trinkets from like the dollar store, like little hearts, little I love you, little little things that she knew and I could put it in the mail and mail it out to her. I knew she would receive it. And she would know in her mind, even though she didn't and I did not we clashed at that time for a couple of years she finally turned around and she knew I was still there and no matter what she said or what she did to me
Oh, we lost your sound, Donna. Donna, we lost your sound. Oh, I'm locked. Okay. Are we back again? Yes. Are we back? Oh, sorry about that. All right. So, okay. I have a question, Donna. So you were saying, you were saying that, yeah. there, that there are, you start recognizing signs. I mean, I was talking yeah. earlier to Michelle and I was explaining to her that to me, there were no signs. I have an issue with my oldest son in November of this past year who decided to alienate me. Uh, no clear reasoning why, just almost like a little bomb blew up. Uh, so I had no signs that this was going to happen. And you like had no that signs. You recognize them. So how would you like, recognize those signs? See, with Daniel, it was like he would slowly stop texting me. And then he, he would slowly stop coming to see me. You, you, you start seeing the signs where they don't want nothing to do with you. And you can look in their eyes and you can see the, a glassy look. There's no feelings there. And a mother always knows a ch their child what they're actually feeling. It's, it's so different being a mother because you sense more than another parent does because you carried that child for nine months. And then you, you raise that child for, I don't know, until you went back to work, right? And you know that child so much before they even know themselves. That's true. That you get the sense that something is up. I, like, I mean, even on Facebook, you read their Facebook. And now out of there, you get little tips and tabs that something is up. Roy, did you have a question? Well, I, I was going to say, um, were, was your son very close with your husband? When he, I mean, was he closer with your husband no. than you? He was, he was a mama's boy. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was just and it, uh, the reason why I say that is before... Uh, his father passed away. Um, two years I was alone, and he liked it that way. But then the younger two said, "Mom, you need to meet someone." And they put me on this Facebook thing that says, "Do you want to meet?" <laughs> and they used to have pictures of guys, girls, whatever. And it so just happened that. The first click is now my husband. So Gord, right? When Gord. my when Gord yeah. came, yeah, yeah. when Gord came to pick me up for a date, Daniel was home, and Daniel's feelings was I should be by myself. I was his, yeah. and oh. Daniel's thoughts were you need to be by yourself so when I need you you're there and he threw a chair and it hit the front window well so, Gord so didn't it, allow that to stand still so it wasn't that maybe he felt like that you were uh, betraying your husband it just, he just wanted you to be there for him only. Exactly. Yes. And you'll see a lot of children from like a divorced marriage or someone has passed away that a child will alienate you like that. 
So it could be an incredible emotional moment for them that they haven't been able to deal with. Uh, as much as I don't like to say it with, you know, my son was going through first his grandfather and then there were a few people and, and, and then even after he alienated me, he lost his grandmother, his aunt, like a day apart. And I was wondering, like, even with that too, like Donna, would you think though that even with, you know, your divorce to Dennis, um, were there things that your son actually never went for help with dealing with his emotions and then suddenly it just, you know, he did. blew up? He, he, he did. And that's when, in that November, when he stopped talking to me, is inside, he was blowing up. Yeah. And that's, I knew at that time, I prayed and prayed and prayed for him, but I, I couldn't do nothing. I sent him the little tokens. I sent him everything I could. I sent him messages. I did everything possible. But what I want to tell you is a year to the day of the next November, the November 3rd of 2013. So yeah. that would be a, ye a year and a bit after his father passed away. I was at our business office and I got a text. I looked at it and it said, hi, Ma, because that's what he calls me, Ma. Yeah. <laughs> and it said, it's me. Can you ever call me your son again? And I looked at it three times because I couldn't recognize it. Remember, I haven't talked to him three in a year. Yeah. And I looked down and I actually had to look at the name yeah. and it was Daniel. And I just started crying because he, I picked it up and I said, Daniel, mom's always been here. Where have you been? Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like said, what you were saying, Donna, just sorry to interrupt, but, uh, and there's nothing wrong with talking about church and going and finding support for that. Um, it's like there, what there we would say, a, you know, uh, when you sit there and you go, oh, God, I'm sorry, I laughed. Uh, God would always look down on you and say, I never left. You're the one. Where have you been? Exactly. Same parents on earth are the same thing. We don't stop loving a, our children. Very few. I can't imagine a lot of parents stop loving their children for any reason whatsoever. Us mothers. And I know a lot of dads out there too. I'm not just saying moms. Yes. There are a lot of single dads out there. And there are a lot of stepdads that'll step up and don't you and a child could do whatever mostly anything in this world. Yeah. And this your that mother, I know I and I know Gord, it's there for them. They yeah. could mess up. My daughter Darcy had a divorce. So we were right yeah. there. My son, Dustin, uh, his first little girl, his, her mother left her at three months. Just left her. Wow. Put Dustin in jail and left the baby. Wow. She's never seen my first granddaughter. I, I, every day I think how a mother can leave a child. Yeah. But because there's love. Yeah. That's why I was no. saying there's not a lot of parents that are out there that wouldn't do what we were talking about. And I remember the first time I held my baby first boy and I just realized what unconditional love my parents had for me that I couldn't imagine before I held that child. And I went, oh my goodness, this is how mom and dad feel about me. Um, but I never alienated my parents. I know, I don't know if, uh, I, I, I think it's more prevalent in this millennial generation, so to speak. I may be wrong, but it appears well, to be more prevalent. 
I think it's com it's, it's coming. I'll tell you uh, something that I've learned this uh, past uh, last year. What says we moved up to Victoria Harbor? I found out a lot of alienation starts when a divorce happens. I'm sorry, it does. Between a parent and a parent against the children, against the children. It's yes. wrong. Yes. But they're used as pawns. So they learn that very early. So they can do it to a parent. And they play, they can play them so off one, yeah, one back and forth. See, Roy has no, has no understanding, Donna, because he's been married forever. <laughs> he didn't go through what we went through and it is very difficult for the children. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, Donna, it, it's, it's a very <laughs> difficult time, Roy. Very difficult time for the children, especially when they're in their teenage years. So, Roy, you had a question for Don again? Well, no, I was just going to say, but from what you said, you kept your lines of communication open with your kids. You sent them yeah. stuff. So, so they knew you were always there. Now, they chose maybe not to engage, but they still knew that you cared about them. Yes, and the only way they could communicate with me was through little tidbits on Facebook that they knew I could catch or they had a cell phone and they would call at nighttime under their sheets. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. It, it, but today, back then, that was 2006, okay? And there was a very, very big case on parent alienation. Now, now, this is not children's alienation, but the children were alienating their father. And the thing is, is I, I'm losing you, so I gotta get my... Yeah, you're, you're in darkness. So, <laughs> yeah, I just gotta get my cord. So what happened was I called in to the station and asked the guy who did it, the interview with his doctor at my time, and he said, <clears throat> oh yeah, I get a great picture of you. Oh no, there's me. Yeah, we're here. You're there. No <laughs> worries. Okay, so then I, uh, I phoned the station and got an interview. Have a lot of money so he could fight it. And he said, if you ever fight it, let me know. Well, the only way I fought it was he passed away. And sorry for my children. And I locked it away and thrown away the keys. But so I was I've, there for my children. I have a question about. Hey, Sorry, Donna, for interrupting, but getting back to the children alienating their parents, uh, did you ever speak to your son and find out what was it that inspired him to send that text and say, hey, mom, I, did he ever speak to you about it? Did we lose Donna again? Well, looks like she maybe froze up. It's a good question. And while we're actually waiting for her to come back on, um, that's a great story though, that he did come back after that year and the daughter came back as well. And everybody keeps telling me, cause like I said, I don't really speak to my two boys and I'm not a hundred percent sure why, but uh, you know, it's inspirational to find out that, you know, Donna's children did come back. And I do believe that, yes, alienation is more common today because of the divorces. What do you think, Roy? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it would be tough being, being a kid 
and your parents divorce, I would think. Uh, but also being a parent, divorcing and having kids that you've got to shuffle back and forth and, you know, it's, I don't, it's a bad, it's a bad situation. That being said, there's some people I think that they're better off divorcing than trying to stay together for their kids. I well, mean, it's I funny because, you know, sorry, but that's what my son said to me, my oldest son, he goes, mom, you and dad are a lot happier since you're apart, but it still doesn't take away from the emotional uh, disengagement of having two parents together. And apparently in his 30th year, he actually started talking about that, how divorce sucks, how it's destructive. And, you know, for ultimately 17 years, he's held all that inside of him. If, if he needs to lash out at me and alienate me, I, I get it, but I miss him horribly. I, but I can't, it was like we were talking to Michelle, uh, a parent that the child alienates. You can't push them. You can't force them. It's their choice if they come back or not. But the biggest thing, because for a month, I was so downtrodden and just a mess, as you remember. Um, and then I thought, I can't do this to my life. Yeah. And it's not that I love him any less. Oh, God, no. But I can't stop moving forward because of my pain. I've got to move past it. Well, yes. And I think I think it's a situation where the, you just got to be there. And in their own time, whatever that is, and it, there may be an event that happens in the future, and they're going to realize, oh, my gosh, this is stupid. I'm just, you know, if something were to happen, say to your parents or, you, you know what I mean? So, I mean, if you're just, there's some event, they're going to look at you and say, life's way too short for this crap. Why am I treating my mom this way? She doesn't deserve that. I don't even hope, I'm hoping that's not even an event, like if my, and God bless, my parents pass or someone in the family pass, because we already had that occur in January. Um, he gave me a hug and that was all I heard from him. That was it, but at least I got a hug. Uh, my youngest one actually chatted for me for a bit. That's fine. What they need to understand is on a bigger picture. And I think I saw this on Facebook. Your brain is not garbage. Don't feed it garbage. Um, am I guilty of doing that? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I still have some issues in my past of some relationship breakups, including my ex-husband, as you know. But it's as long as that garbage is minimalized, we can never get rid of all the garbage. I, I, I mean, people would say you can. I disagree. But at least if the flowers and the gardens and all the beautiful things in your head are way more and that little piece of garbage then you move on and that's what I'm hoping that my my boys understand is um put that little garbage pail in a little corner and you build the better things and if I'm not involved with that they don't want me to be all I hope for them is that their life is great and that I even said to my son I hope that one day if you call and mommy's not there that you're not going to regret the last things you said to me because yeah. I can tell you something I would never want to leave this earth with the last things I've said to one of my parents being very hurtful, wow. regardless of whether you love them or not, it's still the worst place to go. And as we were talking about your book, we could talk about that, right? Wow. Deathbed yeah. wishes. Yep. Yep. That's a, a regret you don't want. No, no. And that's what, uh, I hope you guys are actually listening out there. Roy is actually, he has a book that's coming out. Roy, do you want to talk a little bit about it while we're finishing up? Sure. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, my the, the premise for this is one of my childhood friends, my best friend from childhood, uh, passed away. And right before he passed away, we were talking and, um, and it, we came up about, you know, reflecting back on our life and, you know, all the stuff you do and and, uh, you know, things that we wish we would have done or, you know, or said or didn't do, whatever. So the, the name of the book is called uh, Chocolate Chip Cookies, 
the story of comfort food and deathbed wishes. So it's, you know, like if you knew that you were dying and reflecting back on your life, what would it be? You know, you know, is it something you didn't say to somebody or something you did say to somebody? Uh, 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 Peace you didn't make with somebody that you should have. I mean, all those things uh, before it's too late. And uh, I saw something, I think it was on face, Facebook or uh, MeWe, I can't remember, but it's like, we all think we have time. I put that on there. Yeah. It's called actually, quote unquote, beautiful song. If anybody can actually listen to it, I'm really not thinking about who was singing it but trouble is you think you have time mm -hmm. and that's the trouble we think we have time yeah. um i'm very honored to have a chapter in the book uh we still have a couple openings don't we for people yeah. that are interested in it it's a small investment you become a published author if this is intriguing to you please contact us yeah um i am uh, it, it, you can get us at that gal and that guy at gmail.com and just say we're interested in, in writing a chapter for it and you'll be a published author and we'll give you the more information on that. Yep. Um, it's, I think, Roy, too, what we were talking about, it, it, like in my chapter, I luckily at this point, I'm not, um, I am not dying. Well, we're all dying, but you know what I'm saying. But yes. however, the, the point hi. is, hi, hi, Donna. Hi, just give me a second here, okay, honey? Okay, mm -hmm. we're just, um, so ultimately what, what I was saying is that what is, what would be today what my deathbed wish would be? And we were talking about that. To me, it actually has to do with this topic. Um, mm -hmm. I wish that this didn't affect my kids so badly, but something I have no control over. Um, I'm sure that down the road, I'll probably have a few more stories that I can add to that though. <laughs> Hopefully not too many. I'm trying to stay away from that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna bring back Donna. She's back on, sorry, we lost the reception and uh, we're just gonna close this off, Donna, okay? So we're going to say good night to our people because we're out of time. Uh, let me just unmute you here, there we go. Okay, we can't do that. Well, we're going to go. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I am Lorianne. I am that gal from Milton, Ontario with... And I am that guy, Roy Miller from Dallas, Texas. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a great night. We'll be seeing you soon or talking to you soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>